So as I say, in theory, we should have um, access to programs which allow the um, network to be activated. So now I've got a program called IP, I can look to see what devices there are. And in fact, the Ethernet has gone back to ETH0. So uh, as I say, I'm not quite sure what was going on with 6.3 and the new kernel, maybe some sort of incompatibility there that was causing that. <clears throat> So at the moment, if I do um, ping, for example, and my name server, sorry, the gateway would be a good place to start. You can see, uh, all right then, um, I haven't got ping yet. When's that going to be installed? I think that's a little bit way on. Let's just take a look. Uh, where are IP root? Oh, it's near the end. Uh, probably about three quarters of the way through. We're about halfway through at the moment, so still a few more packages. Okay. Um, well, anyway, um, I'm not sure how else to demonstrate this, but. Um, you can see straight away that there's no IP address or no um, information indicating that the Ethernet is working. It's actually down at the moment as well, which shows it's not working. So what I'm going to do is attempt to bring it up. So I use the command IP again, ADDR for address, add the IP address that I want to use, um, which is going to be 52. Um, and a broadcast address. All right, so let's see what that's done. So it looks like it's taken those parameters. You can see they're there, what I've just typed in. So now I'm going to bring the link up. So IP link set ETH zero up should activate that link and yeah you see there's something come from the kernel there that's just popped up saying the link is up um, it was still down when I ran the command command so it's too soon so if I do IPA again yeah you can see it actually says it's up there so in theory I've got a connection to um, the network um, but what I need to do next is to install um, the SSH daemon. Um, so that I can actually get into this machine remotely. Um, now originally I'd already installed this. Um, so it already existed and I hadn't thought about that. My notes assume that it's already installed because I tried to install it earlier and get it activated earlier and that was when I realized the network didn't even exist. So I'm going to... No, uh, yes, I have prepared for this actually, yeah. If I go into BLFS... Oh, right, I haven't downloaded the files. Off of the server, that's a bit of a shame. Um, let's go back to the pre one. Yeah, what a shame. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is to uh, come out of this, come out of this. I'm going to have to reboot back into 6.3 to download the files that I need um, and then come back into this. Um, CLFS3 um, to build OpenSSL and OpenSSH to allow me to get in. Okay, so I'm booting back into LFS 6.3.
locking this route mount uh, is it already mounted actually yeah okay cd clfs cd sources cd blfs yep so if i use links to go to the clfs server into blfs 7.5 and i want to download well i might as well download all these files that i'll need eventually so that they're ready um, gpm i've got links so i'll be installing Open SSH. Yeah, this is what I've done. So I had prepared for it, but I just hadn't downloaded them. So this is the equivalent of what I've done for these pages that we've been installing so far in the booted environment is just the text output of the HTML page for the instructions to install Open SSH. And same with the open SSL. I'll fetch the patches. And the archive. And the instructions. And lastly, there's wget fetch. Okay, that should be it. So if I have a quick look at, for example, OpenSSL will be installing first. You can see it, it looks similar to the other text files we've been looking at. Okay, so I'll reboot again back into CLFS 3.0. Okay, temporary system. In fact, it's not temporary system, it's the kernel that's temporary, that's the system we're building up. Okay, so let's go back in. Um, log in. Now, I need to activate the network again, so I'm going to recall the commands that I used previously if they're still there. Unfortunately, they're not. Oh, yes, they are. There they are. So I'm going to copy these and put these, actually I'll run the boot up script. So I've got my mouse and then I'm going to, yeah, copy that and put it in the script. this in that's the one to bring the link up Right now, I'm not sure if there needs to be a delay between those two IP commands. I'm going to just put a sleep in here for one second to give the chance the link to come up for the script complete because it did take a little little while. So let's try running that. Okay, so that looks okay there. So now I'm going to go into sources, BLFS, and I'm going to um, get the OpenSSL instructions up and log into another terminal 
and extract open SSL. Uh, SSL dash one. So these are the files from, as you've seen, BLFS 7.5, which, as I say, is probably the nearest to CLFS in terms of age of packages and so on. So I need to put these two patches in first. Then configure and build. I'll put this all in as one go. It's got the amp, double ampersand to link the two commands together. And just wait for this to complete. Okay, so that's built. Um, test results, this should make tests. If you want to disable installing static libraries, use this said. Um, not aware that I need to prevent that from happening, so I'll just copy the install commands. Okay, and there's nothing else to be done for this, so let's come out of that and we'll install OpenSSH next. So let's start. So requirement is open SSL and there's some optional things which we're not interested in there. So we need to create a directory for setting up the environment for the SSH daemon. Then we need to add a group and a user for SSH as well. Uh, don't worry about these messages. It's just because the system hasn't been set up completely. Let's run the configure. Oh, right, okay, there was more commands there. That wasn't obvious. Oh, right, yeah, I didn't see the backslash there. Okay, so what we'll have to do here is to remove OpenSSH and extract it. Uh, 
Right, so we've done that, we've done that, we don't need to do that again. Yep, so configure. And I'll run the make as well. Right, so that's built. So as the root user run make install. Well, we root anyway. And we'll put in these commands as well. And that should be it. Um, now, one thing We've got to do it says here to make sure that, the, that there's no root logins allowed but that's something we definitely do want because we haven't got your normal user apart from well we haven't got a normal user on this clfs um not intending on adding one as it's only a temporary environment if you like there's a hopping stone to the next um linux from scratch rebuilding so what i'm going to be doing is actually ensuring that, that actually says permit root login equals yes so let's edit this file here and look for that as it's normally in here but disabled so I just want to remove that hash to un uncomment it and save it so that should now allow me to enter this machine as the root um, assuming I know the password for the root. Now, um, I tried installing the scripts and I thought it's probably not a good idea because the system's still not complete yet. So I installed the scripts after the system had been built up and unfortunately the scripts didn't work correctly. There seemed to be some files missing and I assume that's just because the CLFS and BLFS um, boot scripts aren't compatible so I'll try it again at the end of this build see if they do work or not see in case it's something I did but for now um, to start the um, SSHD server all we need to do is to run user sbin sshd and that should be enough to um, be listening on um, is it port 22 I think for incoming SSHD or SSH connections. And I can test this now. Um, for example, I can try and um, get into the Pentium Pro server that I've been using. So if I type SSH context at ppro, In fact, I'll have to type the IP address in because there's no networking information. So let's type in the direct IP address. So yes, it's connected. Be sure you want to continue. Yes. Type in the password. And I'm into the remote server. So that shows I can get out of this machine over SSH. So it shows that part of the um, installation is working. I'm now going to try and SSH back into this machine that I'm on at the moment. So I've gone out and I'm sort of tromboning, if you like, back down into the machine I've started from, like a U-turn. So I'm going to do SSH, um, I'll have to do root because that's the only user at um, E7500 because the networking. Okay, so it already knows about that machine because um, I've connected probably, yes, via the 
um, Linux from scratch 6.3. So what I need to do is to edit the um, .ssh known hosts file and remove that entry. which is that one there. So I'll delete that, save it. And now if I retry that command, it works. So here I'm coming back into this machine now. If I type in the password for root and there I'm back in. So that shows that not only is the outgoing SSH uh, program working, but also the SSH daemon is listening and accepting uh, connections as well. And if I type uname minus a, you can see this is the 3.14.21 kernel running on the E7500 machine. Um, can look at CPU info as well, just to confirm the actual processor is the one that's running. So that's all good. So the last thing I want to do, well, um, I guess what I should do is add in the command to get this running when I start up. So um, I'll do uh, boot, no, not full stop, boot up SSH. I'll just add in um, slash um, user slash sbin slash sshd to start the ssh daemon. I'll save that. What I'm going to do now is to come out of this and that and that and I'll reboot back into CLFS from cold if you like, run that script and hopefully the GPM should start, the um, network should be set up and the SSH D daemon should also be activated as well. Um, and, and that's purely because I've not installed any startup scripts. As I say the startup scripts I did install didn't work correctly anyway so it's going to be useful to have that script here. Um, if I was going to use this version of CLFS in anger for any um, you know length of time, then I would obviously investigate setting up some scripts permanently, but it's a temporary thing in terms of this project, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So login as root, and let's try SSH. Um, kernel attacks at zero dot thirty. So it can't get there. So let's the the mouse is not working either. So let's now start the boot up script and retry that command. Yep, it's connected. It's allowed me to log in. And I'll try coming back into this one. And yes, it has worked. So I can now um, come out of this. Um, I'll terminate this video and then restart it at the um, graphical front end and um, SSH into this machine and carry on in a, a nicer, more convenient environment. So I'll just come out of this, leave it sitting there and come back, as I say, in the graphical environment.